Today we want to take a look at Corel Aftershot Pro and specifically what we're looking at are the layers. Now this is a function you may or may not be familiar with. If you just use Aftershot for some basic editing, you might not have ever used the layers. But layers are a useful way to do some slightly more advanced editing techniques. And we're going to use this video to give you an introduction to them and then we're going to create other videos that will be more specific to the individual techniques, such as dodging and burning or cloning, those sorts of things. Layers are a great way to edit just certain little areas. So let's take a look at the layers themselves. Now, in the upper right, you have your main layer selected by default. So any adjustment that I might make will affect the entire scene. So if I go hardcore on the contrast, you know, everything changes and uh, the main layer is affected completely. I can undo that. If I need to do just one section, you would use the layers. But again, let's just take a look at them in general. So I click my layers and it normally pops up here. I always move it over to the side so that I have a little more uh, view. I can work with all of my uh, different adjustments here without this being in the way because I don't really need this while I'm working on an image. So the layer itself, layers dialog, has an adjustment layer or it has the heel clone layer. And this again, this is the different more advanced functions you can do. Let's do the adjustment layer just so we have something to start with. I'm going to click on that and it gives me a new layer here and that can be renamed to whatever you like uh, or you can just leave it alone. It's up to you. If you're just doing one little thing, you might not bother renaming it. If you're really more advanced and you want to adjust lots of different aspects of your um, image, you might want to create layers. One would be, you know, highlight for branches. One might be shadows for trunk of tree. You could have another one that is, you know, um, side, you know, whatever. Just name it specifically if you're trying to adjust this, just this area or just this area or just this area. And so you could have a new layer for each one of those simply by adding them here. Now anything that you do from an adjustment viewpoint is going to be done just to the layers that you mask off. And so to mask things off, we need to actually do that. So we have various options here. We can use a circle, we can do different uh, polygons, and we can also do the brush. I'm going to take you through each one. We take a look at it. So as I hover over here, I'm going to click, and now I've got a circle, and I can use my mouse wheel to adjust the size. And so any adjustment I might make will only be if in this area. So if I go full blacks, right, it simply adjusts this area. So on the layer, I've masked off a circle area, and it's going to be affected just there. So I can choose the feathering, I can choose the sizing, and then there are some obviously different options here um, that you can play with as well. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to change to a different type of shape. And so this guy, I click, click, and then when I'm done I can double click and so I could just keep going and then now I have a, again a slightly different area that I could affect so just so you can see it. And as you can see because I am on the same adjustment layer, any change I make here will affect the entire layer. So again, you have to be aware if you wanted this to be one value and this area to be another value, you would want to create different adjustment layers and then add your uh, adjustments independently like that. Does that make sense? All right, so let's take a look at another one. This guy is a curved sort of shape, so it's a little more natural. Same thing, double click when you're done and in the, again, because I already have my blacks set to a, a really high value, it automatically throws it in there. And then uh, if, let's say you did this and you go, oh, that's not what I wanted, you can simply hit the trash can to delete it or you could temporarily deselect it to see, okay, that looks, no, yep, no, right, and you can sort of play back and forth with uh, how it looks and the effect that you're after. Obviously, this example is a bit extreme. 
So I'm going to deselect these guys just for the sake of uh, being able to focus on this guy. So the brush is, for me, my most common use, and it's simply a matter of painting, more or less. And you again, you can um, adjust the, uh, uh, you know, you can adjust the size and stuff. So as I as I come over here, the default is 40, and I can go really big, and you can see the circle there, right? You can go massive, and you get a much bigger circle here. And the way that this works is you simply paint it on, and it gives you a masked off area that you'll see in a second. Watch this when I click and drag here. So that white will then go away because it's trying to do this adjustment. Now any adjustment I do here will be in this affected area. Now you think, well, I, I don't know what the area is. I want to see it. You can use this Show Strokes checkbox here to leave it on. And so then I could paint up here to this area. And now it doesn't show me the affected adjustment. It simply shows me the affected area that will be adjusted. Does that make sense? And then let's say I wanted to do this area under here, but I don't need it to be that big. So I can I can do this, and I can again I can paint on here. This isn't we'll get into the the specific details in a more um, in other videos as well. So if when I deselect that, then the adjustment gets uh, affected onto there. So I can tweak it here and here. Let's say you know that's the intensity of the effect I want, but what I really want is that to be a bit lighter and softer. If you go back to your adjust layer at the top level, you have the opacity slider, and you can then move it to say, you know, I want it 100% as much, or I can bring it down quite a bit, and then you can just play with it to get the effect that you want. So as a quick overview, the adjust layers allows you to affect specific areas of your scene of your image by basically masking them off so that the adjustments that you make only affect those masked off areas. All right, and here's another really important thing. So uh, it's not uncommon that I will, you know, for example, I'll, I'll paint on an area, I'll mask off an area, and just doing this real quick. And then let's say that uh, what I wanted, you know, was for that area to be quite a bit darker or whatever. So I, I can either increase blacks or I can uh, affect the exposure, right? Play with the option that gives you the effect you, you're after, obviously. You know, it's, it goes without saying. Now, it's not uncommon where I will be done and I'll hit my, you know, pan tool and, and zoom in, zoom out, and I'll find something else I want to tweak. Maybe I want to play with fill light because uh, I, I want this area or I want to play with contrast or what have you. And so I'll grab the slider and start going and then I, I realize that nothing is changing. But what you're changing is just the area that you've masked off because I'm currently on the adjust layer option here. So if you want to go back to general editing, you need to switch yourself back to main layer and now if I affect the contrast, it affects it on the entire image. So that's an important thing. It, it, you don't really mess anything up. It's just, it can be frustrating every time you make a tweak, you're like looking and nothing's changing. You're like, what's going on? It's not, if you've done layers, uh, you might have an adjustment layer that is being affected. And so again, if you see that just the layer masked areas get affected when I do stuff. So I could desaturate that, go with a, uh, looks like it's been burnt. Maybe I'm trying to you know, make a tweak. I want to make this warmer tones. Whatever, right? You're, you're the artist. You will figure out how to uh, implement this in the way that best uh, works for you. So, so that is the uh, quick um, sort of positive use of layers. Let me show you one last thing, and this is if you have a an area that um, you've got masked off, but you realize that you overdid it. You, maybe you, you know, if you ran this off into the edges here and you're like, oh, I don't want that to be affected. I just want the, the tree to be affected. You do have this other option down here. You'll notice the uh, little plus. It, it's a little small, but this is the uh, ability to erase the masked area. So I can come over here and it looks like you're painting again, which is a little weird to me, but whatever. When you click off, it then goes away. So if I come in here and I say, I didn't want any of that. 
right? It can go away that way. So that's your eraser tool. And basically what you're doing is you're um, demasking an area. And so you click that again, and then you can obviously put that on again. And then I can then change intensity uh, to create a lighter effect. So again, that's going to apply less of the effect that you've got. So this is one of those, you've got this slider and you have this main layer slider. So if you do 16 areas, you can affect them all here, but they'll all be affected equally. While you're painting, you can affect um, one area here. So if I crank this up, it's very solid, but by cranking it down, it doesn't change anything. Right? The next section that I touch will be lighter. Does that make sense? So uh, this is done before you're doing your thing, and then you um, uh, go here if you want to adjust the entire layer. So the effect everywhere would be, in this case, lessened. Make sense? So thank you for watching this uh, Corel Aftershot Pro introduction to layers. And we covered a little bit about how to add a layer, how to delete layers. You can say, I want to uncheck everything so I can review what I've done, see if I like it. If you pretty much think you need to start over, you can just hit delete and you can start over. It's that easy. Uh, the different shapes that you can use if you uh, have a big area or little area, or if you just want to brush it on. I use the brush myself mostly because I want to like just lighten up you know, highlighted areas where I just want to darken down these areas. Maybe this is a little light for me. I want to darken that down. Uh, so I use the brush quite a bit. And uh, again, there's uh, lots of options and you can just start playing with them and see what you got. Uh, don't forget to check out my videos also on specific sort of common functionality. The uh, clone is real common, right? Photographers take an image and they need to get rid of a rock or a branch or what have you. And uh, so cloning is obviously the way to do it, and you can do it right here while you're working with your, um, you know, files, your raw files, as opposed to having to export it first and then bring it somewhere else, which is nice. And then also uh, the adjustment layer. We will get into dodging and burning, which is a real specific thing for, um, you know, old school photographers who are used to film. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to uh, go about uh, the specifics, although you could probably extrapolate from this intro how to do that. My other videos will kind of take us through the process and you can see it in action, you know, on an image like this one. Thanks a lot, and we'll check you out next time.